Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique Host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dad walk on. Hey, man. Hey, man. This guy right here, man. So, hey, you know what? God just bless you sometime, and you know, God will just drop a jewel in your lap, man. This guy right here, man, out of the blue, man, I get a call, and I'm like, man. God must be shining down on me, man, because this guy, <laughs> the caliber guy that I would want on the show, man. I appreciate that. My boy, that. Big, big, big Court is what, in the- is, What's going on, bro? Man, he's in the building. I'm here, dog, big in D-Town in Dallas. You know what, man? I seen Court Dog, man, and I was yeah. like, oh, that's, that's too, <laughs> I'm glad I ain't running into Court Dog. I, yeah. I might have had a problem with Court Dog. Hey, yeah. real talk. <laughs> hey, my, my wife, she, you know, she says that. It's three versions of me. You got Courtney, you got Court Dog, and you got Big Court. Man, you got yeah. E, you got Lil E, and you got E, dog. Dog is tatted yeah. on my back. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's just the phases that you, you understand through. what it is. Yeah. So court dog protects Courtney and Big Court. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So man, I mean, being from uh, Kansas City, Missouri, why yeah. do y'all get so mad, man, when people say Kansas? Bruh. I'm sick of bruh. It, bruh. Like, them fighting words. <laughs> them fighting words, bruh. <laughs> What's annoying, I'ma tell you, I can see why sometimes people get confused, uh, because there is a Kansas City, Kansas, and a Kansas City, Missouri. But what's irritating is when we tell you, when we specify and say we from Kansas City, Missouri, and then you turn around and say, "Oh yeah, so how is it growing up in Kansas?" <laughs> I'll be like, "Shit, I don't know." You That's know me mean? and him all day. Yeah. That's what's funny. Yeah, because I never, I didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. Like, I got to get up there. I never, I've been to Kansas. I used yeah. to live in. Topeka and, okay. and, and Ogden, Fort Riley. Yeah. But I hadn't been up on you guys' side. I've right. probably been through there because so we go everywhere. So how far are they from each other, though? So this is the, but 30 miles. No, no, right. this is the crazy part. <laughs> this is the crazy part. I was actually born in Kansas City, Kansas, because okay. my mother was at work at KU Medical Center. So it's like they're right next to each other. You you can get there by the street. You know what I mean? So why you get offended <laughs> Because then? it's night and day. It really is. Kansas City, Missouri is a major city. It's big. Kansas City, Kansas is... Country. Uh, it is, but hey, listen, they're my, they're my partners. <laughs> Shout out to KCK, to the 913. Because you know what? I recently just said that when I go on platforms, I'm going to start representing Kansas City, Missouri, and KCK. Why? You know, okay. Because, I mean, we, you know, we together at the end of the day. I mean, the hustlers do their thing together, the, the rappers, everything. It's, it's different, but it's You're still the only the same. one. You're going to be by yourself. I deal. am by myself. <laughs> But he I'm a leader. I'm a leader like that. More people start might start doing what exactly. he's doing. So somebody exactly. has to start. Somebody got to break Somebody that. Somebody got to curse, man. It's yeah. a curse, right? Because yeah. that bring a lot of issues too, right? No, no, no. It's, no? It's, no, it's not oh, like that. No, no, nah, nah, it's, it's, it's like a, a funny type of thing. You know what I mean? It's no, like it's no Dallas beef Houston. or nothing like that. It's, it's no like beef. It's like a Dallas Houston type of thing. It, not Dallas and Houston in the penitentiary because they'll kill each other. Yeah, we tease each other. So it's it's still a brotherhood. We tease well, each other. Well, I know but. Y'all, y'all good, uh, uh, yeah. wholesome guys, but the guys that go to prison or something up mm -hmm. in that area, do they have any kind no, of. No, it's St. Louis and Kansas City. Okay. That's, yeah. that's, see, because you said Dallas and Houston. Right. When, you, when, when Dallas and Houston cats go to prison, Prison. Right. You got the Dallas Cowboys. You exactly. got the Houston. Uh, now it's the Titans, but it used to be the yeah. Oilers, and that kind of yeah. through because they argue over sports, man. Right. Right. So you well, can KCK, they claim our team. So basically, okay. they claim the Royals. They claim claim the Chiefs. Now, I mean, I'm probably getting in trouble for this, but there's a <laughs> lot of money on the Kansas side. They might have more millionaires and, and rich folk than we do. Well, how come I don't side. know of? Because uh, uh, Eddie Griffin from over there with y'all. Yeah, he from the KC, KC Mo side. Yeah. So, where is these But I mean, people? in terms of uh, not necessarily entertainment, just but street. business people. I mean, oh, just business, I'm saying business okay. people. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, it. it's probably more money over there. Okay. And a lot of times in Kansas City, Missouri, when we get successful, we tend to move to that side too. We wow. move to Overland Park and Lenexa and all of that shit over there. That's the, that's where that's the ghost. That's go spot. where the money is. Yeah, man. And it's quieter. It's slow. You know what I mean? Now I'm not going. I mean, you know. You know, you like to get. You, we already in Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, yeah. Well, she always go through the uh, the background. The, the background. She be wanting to know about up, for sure the young boy. Like you that. know, the, the how, sure. he, how he first mm -hmm. started, right? I want to know all of that. Yeah. You know, your mom, your dad. For sure. Were you a statistic? Because I call it a statistic nowadays because everybody who's been coming on our platform seems mm -hmm. to only have one parent they were raised with. Right. It's like unusual to be raised with two parents in the household right. type of thing. So. Were you that statistic? I was. Um, okay. I'm, a, I'm an only child. 
Um, yes, uh, I was raised by a single mom. Um, I'm an only child. Uh, I was raised. Oh, yeah. There it is, right there. For sure. They ain't sure. playing no games yeah, about you. I was, ra- I was raised by, by strong women, educated so, women. Yeah. They ain't playing about you. Yeah, and I was the first grandchild, so they doted on me. I was treated like a little prince. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They're yeah. not playing about you. Nah, nah. So, so your, because you had a great, and just looking at what happened with mm-hmm. you on the, the ride up, you mm-hmm. had a great life to me. Um, you know, far as, far as, where you ended up, to me. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, you know, nobody's immune to the trials and tribulations yeah. of life. But, um, uh, yes, in terms of my formative years, yeah, I yeah. was I, I was raised on love, not survival. You know, I had a beautiful childhood. The only reason I say that is because mm-hmm. of the way that they're going to look at you. Yeah. Your mom, your aunt, your the people mm-hmm. in your, your family. It's all females. Yeah, they're going yeah. to they say he he did great with himself. Yeah, you know, for sure. And that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But where was the male figures? Well, my dad was not far from me. He's he he was uh, close, ironically, but um, he wasn't. You know, I had a dad that showed up on Fourth of July, and not to shit on my dad. I have to keep saying that because he's still alive. But that's my lived experience. That's the truth. Right. He would show up on my birthday. As long as you're alive, you can always still learn and change. Right. And me and my dad, good. We good. Um, My mother passed away in 2010. But um, you know, he would come on birthdays, uh, Fourth of July. You know, my mother held his feet to the fire. I mm. think my mother was the, my dad had seven kids by six different women. Oh. He was married to my mother and my eldest sister's uh, mother. But wow. he, but, but. Hold on, hold on. He was married to your eldest sister's. Yeah. Oh, okay. My mind yeah. was going somewhere so else. So I'm the only child <laughs> by my mother. Okay. All of us are only children. Wow. Oh, okay. With the exception of one baby mama. <laughs> That he had, <laughs> and are you? Do you have a close relationship with all the all your siblings? Not all of them. Uh, okay. Some of them I do, and Ooh, many, mean. with the exception of my eldest, I didn't meet a lot of them till I was a teenager or grown. Okay. None of us grew up together, mm-hmm. so I didn't. I didn't meet. Do them. any of y'all look alike? Yes, me and my my brother, we look just alike. Me and my sisters. So as you look well. like your daddy then. I look just like my daddy. <laughs> Wait till I show y'all a picture. Really? <laughs> I'm a spitting image of him. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's dope. Actually, yeah. he, you know he, he was a handsome dude back yeah. in the day. He, he was, was a womanizer. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Well, he, well, he ain't gonna six, be mad. He's he still six, like that. Seven, seven, seven kids seven by kids. six baby mamas. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He got it popping. Oh man, my yeah. daddy's seventy something, seventy seven, seventy eight. He still buys some women. He still show me pictures on his phone. I'm like. I got. A, I have a sister Your that's twenty two, and serious? her mother's younger than me. My daughter is older than my sister, so my her aunt is younger than her. Wow. <laughs> yeah, my dad man, is dad, a mess. You get it get done. It in. Yeah, yeah. He a mess, man. Wow. Man, so you know, just coming up during that time, man, and yeah. and I, I had looked and seen where you had gotten in trouble when you was young. Mm-hmm. You, when you hit that bump in the road, you know, during your uh, 14, 15. Yep. Let's talk about that a little bit, just just a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think that's, you know, you go through that phase where you kind of, as my mother would say, start smelling your piss, yeah. you know. Um, and some of that was, you know, I came up in the crack era, the gang era, you know, the, the gangs infiltrated Kansas City. And, you know, you have that element. You got the, the and then, you know, not not the not to make excuses, but, you know, we didn't have the male figures and different things like that. We influenced by the culture. The culture mm-hmm. is destructive. So that's why I always say I was being a follower, not necessarily of a person, but of the culture, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, man, we we start doing our thing. You know, we we was and this the this the killing part about it. Looking back on it, we all came from great households. We was in the hood, right? I, I'm from the faux block. I grew up on 42nd. You keep Chester. saying that, but we got a spot called the faux block, and it's like, but y'all's with two C's two or something. C's, That's cool. Exactly. I'll let you rock. Uh, yeah, but, you yeah, know, faux block yeah. is really my people, and y'all know what I'm talking about. Look at it's a ahead. faux block everywhere. <laughs> Shout out to the to Sacramento yeah. X-rated and Brother Lynch faux block. It's a faux block everywhere, but um, and we all came from good families, so we were kind of like just. You know, just out there thugging, really just for the adventure of it. Okay. It wasn't out of survival, I can be honest with you, because none of us really struggled worth the shit. You know what I mean? Like, we had great childhoods. I'm just being honest. But, you know. But I see where you guys had, uh, y'all broke in. You you, you was the mastermind, yeah. and you was the youngest one. Yep. But you was the mastermind. Yeah. And my, I'm like, this is You did this your research, horrible. bro. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, man, um, you know, just... Give me uh, the. And that's so crazy that you said he was the mastermind because the first thing that comes to my mind is that you said you were a follower of the culture. Mm-hmm. And when I think about anybody who's a follower, mm-hmm. I don't usually think of them as being so a leader. So mm-hmm. you know, so you no, were like, you can be. 
it's you can be a leader, you know, within your your immediate circle and your immediate circumstances, but the culture as a whole, right. you know, with the gangster rap, like we didn't know. I wasn't raised on Crips and Bloods and selling dope. That ain't what I knew in my household. But when I stepped out into my environment, that's what I saw. And yeah. so that's what you begin to mimic, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's a domino effect. It's a ripple effect. Some of it is psychological because, like I say, you become afraid. Right. So you start seeing your homeboys getting killed, getting robbed and different things like that. So what you do, you tool up because you're afraid. Yeah. Yeah. But then what happens is then you you kind of inadvertently start perpetuating that same element, you know. And so now I start getting good to you. Yeah. Now you see the respect to come with it, the yeah. eye to come with it. Now you become the the motherfucker you was probably afraid yeah. of, yeah. you know, yeah. without even realizing it. You know, I, I'd seen, I, like I said, when I when I was looking into the the mishaps, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, man, you know, God gave you a second chance. Yeah, always, for sure. He I, gave I, me a couple chances. He gave you a couple chances, yeah. but that was one of the times, like I said, when when you got off of that case where yeah. you could have gotten time and for it could have sure. been taken to the next level. Yeah. You know, yeah. just seeing you uh, walk past that was a blessing. You yeah, know what man. I mean? Because yeah. we wouldn't have got the uh, we wouldn't have got that. Uh, uh, which which one of them? It was a. Uh, uh, Kansas, uh, Kansas, City, Kansas, Kansas City, City Chief. Chief. Yeah. yeah, we wouldn't have got yeah, all man, those. We wouldn't have got a lot, bro. I mean, because I was, man, <laughs> I was 15. I was 15, and then I had a baby on the way, you know, wow. at the same time, you know what I mean? And I'm in there looking at juvenile life. I didn't take none of that shit serious, bro. I didn't realize how, how deep of trouble I was in. I didn't until I went to court. You know, and they like, and my DJ was explaining to me because I'm thinking that my, my mama gonna come get me. I'm yeah, like, yeah, I'm a yeah. juvenile. Y'all can't do nothing to me. They was like, what? No. It's like, boy, you in here with ACA, attempted murder, burglary, robbery, all these felonies. Like, bruh, like it you can go you down. fucked up. You wow. Know? So back then they could charge you for <clears throat> yeah. as well, an adult. Well, so at, at that time, this was like ninety one, I believe. They were still kind of going through this thing in Missouri of what to do with juveniles that right. committed adult crimes. So they were going to certify me, which okay. basically. In essence, give me juvenile life, keep me in juvenile until I was old enough to get shipped to the penitentiary. Mm, gotcha. Yeah, so that's when it got real for me. I and was then, like, how did you feel at that time? Um, um, when I was, I was scared. I was coming. scared, man. You know, I ain't gonna front. Like, I put the, I put the, you know, the face on and the front on, cause you know, I mean, I was, I, I was a, a badass, but not to that extent. You know, I wasn't trying to be no career criminal. You know, so when the judge told me that I was, um, he couldn't in good conscience let me out because I was a danger to society. I remember going back to my uh, cell and just kind of sitting on my bed and a tear trickled down my face. Oh yeah, like, it can I happen. I was like, shit, this is the other side of it. I didn't know, I had no, that was my first reference point of the other side of everything I was doing. So, you know, uh, God smiled on me and I was able to, you know, my dad got me a lawyer is what it was. And juvenile court works a little bit different. They, they consider all these other variables. I, did, I always did well in school and academically. At the time, my mom was kind of going through a little something with, with you know, in her life. Um, so they took all those variables. I was the youngest one on the case. So they painted the picture kind of like, oh, he just got mixed up with a bad crowd. So you know, He's did a still good a good kid, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So they gave me another shot. And okay. that's when they, because I wanted to stay in jail. When they told, yeah. I was in there maybe about like who seven wants months. To stay in jail because they they made me go and be on house arrest at my dad's house. <laughs> I hadn't lived with my dad. I didn't know him like that. So, so I was you like, to stay in jail. Yeah, I told him that dad. when the DJO came and told me, said, "Hey, we got good news. We gonna send you home, but we gonna put you on house arrest at your dad's." I was like, "Shit, I can stay here?" Because at that point, I got acclimated. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Man, we playing basketball for toast to toast," and, and juvenile was off the chain. Yeah, I don't yeah, know what so they yeah. put in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> So I had got <laughs> I got used to the regimen, you know. I'm like, this is what it is. I'm cool. And she was like, nah. No, you gotta go to your dad's. And that was that that was a little bit awkward because, you know, I he, I had a stepmother. Um and again, I, it wasn't like me and my dad was estranged. It was just that we hadn't, you know, cultivated that father son uh dynamic. We was just two niggas named Courtney living together. Junior yeah. or junior? I'm a, I'm the second. You're the second. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. how hard was it living with him? It was because uh, he's was, trying to set you straight at this. So time. let me. So he was. So let me tell you the conversation I had to have with him. One time he did. He was trying to lay down some ground rules, and he called himself trying to loke up on me, right? And I remember telling him kind of respectfully, but sternly. But I was still out of pocket as a child. 
a, a youngster. I said, man, listen, bro, you didn't miss that time. I said, dude, I just got out of jail. I don't know if I'm going back and I got a child on the way. You missed them days, bro. So I tell you what, I be in this house. I ain't going to disturb y'all, but that you want me to come in at 6 p.m., that ain't finna happen. So, yeah. Shoot, <laughs> <laughs> sure. I wish you would. And so, so how did he so, set you straight? Or did shit, he just he, take he, it and be he, like, No, he locked that door so I couldn't get in when he said, so I could, yeah. So I, he kind of forced me to, to fall in line with it, you know. But, you know, my dad never tried to, like, like you know, put no muscle on me and nothing right. like that, you know. But it, we it, it worked out, you know. And my stepmother was sweet, you know. She uh she she that's good. That's a blessing. She stepped in and she's a good woman, you know. She was a Christian woman, so uh, she kind of took me on, and it, it was it, it had its rough patches as as expected, you know what I mean. But then too, they were going through what they were going through as a married couple, a married and couple, she didn't right. sign up for that shit. She didn't never had no kids, hmm. you know. So. You know, not understanding, they already going through some shit and struggling. Now here, you got your, you know, your wayward ass son thrown in here with us, you know, and that just probably <laughs> made the situation even worse. So, mm -hmm. you know. man, just I, but but after that, <clears throat> you kind of you didn't go back through it with that situation. For it's the breaking in, you you quit all that after that. I quit all of that. Yeah, the breaking in, part. the breaking, breaking in. But, just, right. but here come just, the here yeah. come the nine the streets. Yeah, here come we getting yeah. money now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already yeah. know. I graduated. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. getting money now. Yeah, the little mindless <laughs> thug shit wasn't appealing no more. <laughs> that wasn't appealing no more. In the no 90s, more. man, you know, yeah. I, I look at that time, man, and, and I really look at people mm -hmm. don't realize how it influenced the 88, 89, mm -hmm. 90, 91, 92, 93. Mm -hmm. Those were some times, man. It was a lucrative time. It and, was. And, and we were hurting our people and we didn't give yeah. a damn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm being real. real I seen talk. it, bro. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I didn't I didn't think about it though. I was too young to care. No. You know what I'm saying? No. I was too I young mean, to care. You yeah, care? Yeah. No. I, I no, I no. Care. Well, well, just to think about it, I mean, you know, crack, I didn't have time to care. Crack touched my household, you know, as, as I'm sure everybody, yeah. you know. Um, I'll be honest with you, my, my game was weed. And the reason that I went to weed is because even then I seen the type of time they was giving niggas over little yeah. shit. Yeah. You know, I seen when I was hearing about niggas getting, you know, 15, 20 years for for an ounce mm -hmm. or for a sixteenth of eight ball, I'm like, like nah, nah, that ain't that, that ain't was, worth it. That you was know a what different I mean? for me. I was like, nigga, I'm doing this all the way. I'm doing both. You know? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, well. like now, yeah. now, back then you did have a little bit of integrity. Like I'm gonna yeah. just do this one or that yeah. one. I I remember those guys, yeah. but I was like, nah, man, I want it all. You know? I'm being. I was crazy, I, man. I couldn't. I could. I couldn't. He remember Juicy. He remember Juicy. Well, no, he didn't want to go it, back there. It, well, it wasn't that. It was just that it just didn't add. The money didn't add up. To At least time. how I seen from for the time, it just didn't add up. You know, um, especially the cost. You know what? Because I remember the numbers back then, and I was doing the numbers, and I'm like, but you had a child too. I did. That was yeah. the difference. But were that you was in a deal your child's break. life at that time? Yeah, hell yes. yeah. I okay. raised my child. Yeah. yeah Just so checking that's, because you I'm, were on I'm the with street, the same so I'm still with sure. the same woman that I have been with for yeah. since I was fifteen. Come on, man. Stop yeah. playing, man. Yeah, See so that's what I'm talking all, about. Y'all don't understand, man. I'm with the same woman that I was with. When I was, uh, yeah, I've been. You as what? It been twenty years. Oh, Don't set up there. Yeah. You been with her twenty years? Yeah. She look like she's twenty five. That's the way I do it. You know what I'm saying? It's get good living. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. God, man, Black that's all crack. it is. Man, Black God, don't crack bro. unless you smoke crack. <laughs> but but so you you basically was uh, you was. This dude crazy, but <laughs> you basically was uh, one of those guys that you only dealt with when you had buffers. I mean, I and I remember those guys too, the ones who mm -hmm. really you. And but then I also looked at the the music. You mm -hmm. got into the music I as did. well, and that was a help. I didn't give a dang by getting no music. I should have been in music. And that's what it was too, man. Like even w w during my hustle days, I was never really a born to lose ass nigga. Like I always still kind of had. I knew it was something more for me. Yeah. I didn't know exactly what, but I did have the dream of music. And see, I signed with P. I got with No Limit in 95. Yeah. So I graduated high school in 94. Whoa. Mm, that you know was what I mean? So you were what, 18? Wait yeah, a minute. I was 18. Five. What song? What rap? What, what was P? Uh, what was he doing? No, that was right. That was I signed with P right when 99 Ways to Die came out in TRU, the first true record. Yeah. And right before Ice Cream Man. That Ice but Cream I Man. But I want to know what, what did he see in you? Why he wanted to sign you? Initially, what it was, I sent him a tape, you know, okay. and uh, I sent him a bunch of tapes. Actually, this is when he was still in the Bay Area. You know what I mean? I was rapping with my partner, Cisco. Uh, we had a group called CCG. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I, we just didn't want to be local no more. You know yeah. what I mean? And so I sent the tape and I was just persistent. You know, I called his voicemail back then. He had a voicemail. I would fill that bitch up. So nobody else could leave voicemails <laughs> Dope, every day. Man. I made it my business to just call back to back to back to back to back. And finally I got on his nerves and he figured if I was calling like that, then I meant what I was saying. So he went and got the tape, listened to it. And he called me and was like, Hey, I'm doing down South hustlers. You know, y'all want to get down. I was like, yeah. And so that's how I started. Like I was living with my dad at the time. Cause when he called, he called and he asked for Courtney. I didn't recognize the voice. So I was like, he ain't here. He wasn't one of my homeboys, you know? And so then he said, well, tell him P call. I was like, no, 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 it's me. I was like, no, 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 that's me. I'm here. And he was like, nigga, you dodging somebody or something? <laughs> and I was like, nah, I was like my dad named Courtney. And so it went from there. So, okay. Yeah. You, and, and so that was his initial intention was to get you on down South right. hustlers. Right. Now it was two of those, but right. It was two different ones. It was, it was a double disc, double disc. Yeah. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Double disc. Okay. And you was on that thing. And that was your first time meeting Pete. That was my first time uh, being in a real recording studio. studio. That was my first time being to the Bay area. That was my first time being on a national record. Okay. That was my first time on a, for a lot of shit. Well, well, who was in there when you recorded? Was, because cause I talk, I, I, I called, I'm going to tell you what I did. I mm -hmm. called my boy, shout out KLC. I called him. Yeah. I said, Last night yeah. I said, KLC. Shout out to KLC. I said, this nigga court coming, man. Tell yeah. me about it. He said, man, he's a good dude, man. Yeah. I said, he said, yeah, I'm coming up there. He probably, he said they doing something in Bozier City. Yeah, he coming yeah up we got here. that uh, Saturday. Yeah, he I'm told, going from here to there. Yeah, he told yeah. me, he said he coming up here. Uh, yeah. He going to come see me Sunday. Ain't that what he told us? Mm -hmm. So yes. you better come. And if he don't, I said, nigga, I'm coming to yeah. that Baton Rouge. So let here. me tell you about KLC. So when when P flew us out to Oakland, uh, he had an apartment for, where everybody stayed in Hayward. Okay. And it was when I met Beats by the Pound. I met KLC, Moby Dick. Um, it was Mia, Servon, all of them were in an apartment. Hey. And um, <clears throat> KLC used to be so hard on me. We end up going out there to do the Down South Hustlers. We did the song R.I.P. So yeah. a lot of people are just putting together 20 some years ago that that's me I'm on the inside of the cover, on the CCG cover. Yeah. But um, So we end up recording an album out there as well. It was the first time we got to meet K. Lou, you yeah, know, yeah, and we got yeah. beats from Al Eaton. These are the folks that was doing shit for too short. You know, so yeah, we, yeah. we thought we made it. Yes, you know sir. what I mean? Yes, sir. And, uh, and Banks and all of them. Yeah, man, this nigga KLC used to, like, like I, I felt like he used to make me stay after class. Like, you know what I'm saying? He would just stand. I would be in there doing my verse, and he would stand in the window and just look at me. Do it again, bro. <laughs> Do it again, bro. And he would just stare at me while I'd be reading. <laughs> and I'd be, like, reading my shit. Like, look, like. Why the nigga standing me like that? <laughs> man, KLC was so hard on me back then. Do yeah. you appreciate it now? I did, of course. Yeah, yeah, he it, was trying to make me better. He was trying to pull, you know, the best out of me. Yeah, wow. for sure. I like it, man. Yeah. You know, I heard so we told so many stories when he was on here, man. Yeah, I I, I done started to repost now because I didn't have no no subscribers hardly. Yeah. I was like now at that time. I was like, man, I'm gonna put this boy back up. So yeah. I'm gonna start back going through it. Plus, he got to come back. But yeah. anyway, yeah. we talk all the time. But mm -hmm. it's just the fact of how people, you know, when you get to California, you in there, you do the the down south. What was what sticks out in those in that time period? Just mm -hmm. the, not. Other than KLC, what sticks out being in the studio for the first time around people you really didn't know? <clears throat> um, the, I'll be honest with you, man. It was just the whole experience. I mean, you have to think, you know, we're kids. I'm, I think I just turned 18. You know, we had never been to the Bay Area. Um, you know, P was like in No Limit. You know, we didn't know the difference between a, a no limit and a, and a and a major. You know, yeah. we, we thought we arrived. You know, <laughs> now there was a little bit of uh, internal um, uh, confusion. Just I would say with me and my not not me and my my partner, but you know, uh, the manager we had at the time, he he didn't really know what he was doing, but he knew more than us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He was older than us, and and it kind of it was a, a strange little um, dichotomy because you know me and P had such a we had developed and cultivated a close relationship. Yeah. My partner and P, they hadn't met. They hadn't talked until we actually got out to California. Okay. They was meeting for the first time. So imagine me and P are talking for months before yeah, we yeah. go out there. You the leader. So, so by the time we get there, you it's might like not me and even, P know each other. You might not even be the leader, but in his eyes, you are the leader. For sure, for sure. I was the spokesperson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was just the vibe. Me and P are kind of cut from the same cloth. Yeah. You know, that's why we've been friends for so long. Yeah. But him and my partner, they really didn't mesh. 
you know, just to say what it is. You know, I don't think my partner cared for him, and P didn't care for him. But is this the partner that sound like him? No, that okay. was that I, was. I, I thought about that when you that was uh, that was another one that would okay. come in and out the group. Okay, but keep <laughs> yeah, but you, that's what I thought when I was like, no, this nigga no. sound like him. He probably ain't gonna like nah, him, you know. Nah. But this was another guy. Yeah. So why do you think that your partner? Because it's been a long time yeah, now. For sure. Do you still you and the guy still yeah, talk? For okay. sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, my guy. What, would he ever confide in you and say, "Hey, man, no, this is I why I exactly really didn't like this guy"? No, man. It, what it was, it, it was. See, I had we I had the insight and the foresight to understand that we didn't have any leverage. We, you know, it wasn't like we had a big buzz. It wasn't like we could go to P and say, hey, man, you know, jive or sick with it and rap a lot, said this, can you match it? You know, like some, you know what I mean? We mm -hmm. couldn't, we didn't do that. I understood that. Him, on the other hand, you know, not that he was completely wrong. He wanted to do business. He wanted to do corporate business. He was like, hey, check this out. And the manager at the time was on the same shit. He was like, they came at P like, yeah, so what kind of advance you talking about? You know, what's this? The contract. You know, P hustling. He building. P like, nigga, motherfucker, I'm giving y'all a chance. Y'all niggas ain't nobody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which he right. Which though. he was right. But then also, your guys right. is right too. It, it can be too right. This is to my point. This is professional and trying to show yes. that. Correct. You know, but, I knew that, but I knew that you're trying to do the right thing in the wrong situation. Right. I was thankful. I was more thankful for the opportunity. opportunity. Yeah. And my exa I remember us being in a hotel and we talked about it. And now we're 18. We don't have a reference point of no music business. We're yeah. just going on common sense. And I remember telling them, I said, bro, I said, let's just do it. I said, we don't, what do we have to lose at this point? You know what I mean? Because if we do it and it does well, then we're going to get what we worth at that point. But right now, we we gonna, we go back home. We ain't got shit else to exactly. do. Exactly. You know, so that was my position on it. You yeah, know? I, I like the fact that you at 18 was able to converse like this because at 18, nigga, we going to rob P. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, in your mind, yeah, like yeah. 18, e? yeah. Nah, 18 P, e? P, we knew we couldn't do that well, with P. P was I, I, real nigga. at the nigga. end of the day, I know yeah. we can't do it, yeah. but I, it's hard, bro. Yeah. yeah, You say that, but yeah. but then you the same 15-year-old that were stealing guns. That's so, true. That's true. <laughs> it's but, just, but you had grew and matured yeah, enough and then, to know P, that. P, and then I had I had already kind of, you know, established a brotherhood with P. So like, that's the difference. Yeah. That's the difference I right looked there. at him, yeah. like I said, when we met, it was like we all already knew each other. Yeah. But him and my partner meeting for the first time they talking for the first time yeah, you yeah. know so it was it was it was a little you know and then p was going through different changes with no limit you know um he was having they were navigating some internal shit too and then success hit him it, it was a, it was it was a lot going what, on was, yeah. was your uh what, this okay master p trying to figure all this out he mm -hmm. young too yes he exactly. young too that's the exactly. part that everybody don't get i get exactly. so upset with people when they talk about Birdman or master p i, I even get, sure. listen, you throw sugar sure in there too, too. i yep. get upset about people when they talk yep. about these young guys who yep. was came into this monitor this entrepreneurial uh rap industry trying where, where people out. wasn't no we was map. trying to figure it trying out trying to figure it out yeah. so no i get map. upset bro you don't even know i'm the same way i don't bro. play about south anyway yeah. i'm gonna be honest with you. i'm kind of throwed off you know what i'm saying yeah i'm biased but but that's one thing I get upset about. Yeah. I'm mean, like, man, no, nah, man, we ain't have much down here. And when they, for Peter even go from New Orleans up to California exactly. and then establish himself, yeah, that's a that's a whole lot right there yeah. at, at the age he was. Yeah, and being a young father for him also helped. Absolutely. So you and him had a lot in common. Yes, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, neither one of us smoked a drink. We was really workaholics. We was focused. Yeah. We both were dreamers. You know, yeah. we both were athletes. So yeah, we had a, a lot of commonalities that. You did know, P ever talk to you about when he was trying to go to the league? and all that or when he did play in the league y'all yeah. was friends during yeah, this time yeah for sure how did what what was some things that was messing with him during that time and I'll ask you that kind of stick out to you or was good for him during that time I mean that was always his initial dream you okay. know P was an athlete and a basketball player before he was a rapper and a CEO that was okay. his initial dream that was him going back to his calling yeah you know what I mean yeah. so for the rest of the world it was like oh what this nigga trying to play ball no, that's what he started out doing. Right. You know, he only the the music shit was a default. That was like, fuck, I got I got hurt. I got to figure some other shit out. You know, so that was just him pursuing his dream, man. Like he loved, he loved basketball. And he still does. He still I mean, play. Well, I see him play a little bit, but now he's trying to get into coach. He's trying to get a coach, coaching job. Coaching job. Oh. Yeah, with the Lakers at, at this point. You know, and I know he tried with the Pelicans as well. Why don't he just buy a team? But he he's, he's entertained that as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? But Romeo Romeo didn't take to it like that. I thought. At mm -hmm. one point, that that's what, what he, he was, was gonna, gonna do, do too. He did. He, he I played seen him in, try into in USC. It. Yeah, in USC. Yeah, yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think maybe his passion 
was just more with movies and different movies, things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I seen him grow up into a man, man. I, yeah. As my son did as right. well. Like I say, I'm watching these things, and mm -hmm. when you when you see the, these are the things that you look at. And you like, man, you know, I can do it too. Right. I'm being real. When you're a person that's of age and you yep. know these guys running about the same age, you yep. like kind of look at it and be like, mm -hmm. yeah, hell, if they did it, hell, anybody can do it. Exactly. It gives you an opportunity to think that way. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate y'all for that for sure. Because y'all mm -hmm. was hustling, man. Yeah, man. So so did, how did that how did that double tape, that double, I want to say <laughs> CD so bad, but it was cassette tape. So no, it was a double it was CD. Both. Yeah. It was both though, yeah. wasn't it? Because at yeah. that I mean, time, B, you could do both. He was the first one to do that. A lot of people try to give credit to Tupac with All Eyes on Me. No, 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 no. It was one P. Do, I remember yeah. that. And yep. I'm going to tell you what threw me off because I called Bobo Luciani about it and mm -hmm. he said it was two, two, I'm like, no, nah, it was a double. I said, I said, no, nah, it, it was a double. One thing about me, I really was, I really bought that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I, I invested my money into yeah, that. Yeah. You know, I was buying the two <laughs> and I had them, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and it was dope, you know, just being a UGK fan. For sure. I always, you know, I always just always was watching what P was doing because yeah. all that Louisiana and Texas yeah. is like right by each right. other. So how did you, how, did you, what, your first time going down to um, Louisiana. Louisiana with mm -hmm. him because you did go down there. Mm -hmm. How was that like because you went from Kansas to, to to California back down to you had to go visit Louisiana well no so when when they when he was in the bay I was because you got to think I'm like square tank no limit you know you have different phases of no limit you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. I'm what you would consider a lifer so I'm square tank okay. so when he went back to Baton Rouge they went to Baton Rouge no I was still in Kansas City yeah, okay so, so you I, went back to Kansas City to Kansas City yeah and then, when and how long did you stay in Kansas City? Till I moved to LA in two thousand one. How many years were you in Kansas City? Maybe f five. After that, you was a celebrity. Um, who was celebrity? Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe a little. Yeah, a you little was bit. a celebrity. Yeah, I ain't gonna, yeah. I ain't gonna put the ten on the two. I was, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, they knew you down there. Yeah, you yeah. been with No Limit? The, the, yeah. the, these niggas is yeah. working. Yeah, they knew me. They I mean, know, yeah. yeah, you know, I had, I had hood, hood. You know, I was uh, infamy, hood infamy too. Who, but you know, yeah, how, other yeah, because some people didn't respect or didn't or were jealous because jealousy is at yeah. home, man. Did yeah, you yeah have I'm used your, to that. You had the rivals. You had people. I who still didn't. to this day. Yeah. Really? Yeah. We old man. I mean, you got to think. Bro. No, I am bro. not but, you. No, but what it is? You got them too. Yeah, yeah definitely you got them. Got them. I, I mean, definitely you got to think. With social media, is easy access. Now everybody can have an opinion. Everybody can, you know, they they presume of what your life is oh, through yeah. social media, oh, and yeah. they draw their own conclusions. And you got motherfuckers looking at your profile, just 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 man. steaming mad. No, I know that. You I know, they it. make I fake accounts, comments. all of that. You know, I see them too. How, yeah. do, you, how do you deal with all of that? Oh, it's hard, but he's been dealing with a long well, time. Well, I'm gonna tell you what 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 happens is you. You know, for one, you just have to be rooted and grounded in who you are. You know, you understand that everybody has an opinion. You know, social media, it's a lot of mental illness out here, too. A lot of people that just, you know, you might have somebody leave a negative comment and they somewhere in their basement with a helmet on sitting in some tidy whities. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, half retarded and, and no, you know, I don't mean that no, in a no, disparaging no, no. I way. Get it. I get but, it. you know, um, so I, I get it. It's a gift and a curse with social media. You know, you just have to know who you are and be grounded in who you are. And and you can't, you know, have your self worth caught up in other people that you don't know as hands because you got to keep going back to them for it if you do, you know. So you can't please everybody, you know. Now, now I've had to run down on a few people that I knew loosely that was <laughs> that was talking crazy on social media. You got to get some straightening with them because sometimes, you know, if if certain people play with you and try to create a narrative, you know, it's like in, in, in school then everybody else think they can do that. That's what know? we're learning how to do. We're learning <clears throat> yeah. how to pick and choose who to respond exactly. to. Exactly. Because at first, you know, you, you take the higher road and be like, right. no, nah, I'm not going to waste my energy. Right. But you realize that there's some people you do have you to do You do have to check. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and it depends on their influence. It depends on how many people paying attention to them because, you know, the truth can stand still while a lie runs a marathon. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So sometimes you got to get in there and put an alternate narrative out there. You yeah, know? yeah. And you don't got to stay with it, but you just got to make a statement. That's mm -hmm. what it is. That's what I said. You know. Yeah, yeah. So I think the most important <clears throat> thing is, is is definitely chess, not checkers. Absolutely. Um, you just got. I, I, I'm a God fearing person, so mm -hmm. I always the, the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord for me. Yeah. So I basically walk Amen. in purpose, man. Amen. You know what I'm saying? I always say, <laughs> man, you got to be. 
purpose, purpose chaser, chaser, man. Not a yeah, paper like, chaser. Yeah, yeah, like so yeah. everything I'm doing is, is pretty much being articulated for uh, mm -hmm. longevity for us to be in the yeah. game a long time. You yeah, know what I mean? For sure. Um, and to keep these the young boys straight too. You know, Absolutely. God put these people in uh, in this whole, um, under this umbrella so we wouldn't get rain on them, be honest yeah. with you. So I'm rocking with them. So at the end of the day, man, we just got to do what we know to do and keep it moving. Yeah. Help our people, help the culture. That's what, um, that's what you doing, you yeah. know what I mean? You, that's why you, I like your platform. That's why I was telling man, you, Thank though. you, man. You know, man, you know we yeah. try. How we doing up in here, man? We you yeah. showed up, man. Is it you seen it on on uh on on social media? Yeah. But but what but see in here we we cut people off. Yeah. We talk. We have a good time. <laughs> Nigga be like, let him talk. Eat nah, a man, it's I a be conversation, acting, I be having bro. a good time, bro. I tell people they do the same <laughs> shit to me. <laughs> they they do damn, see some of the comments. Yeah. They like, well, I want me to shut up. You I'm like, you know, sometimes I be willing to get in the show. I don't say nothing. Up. Why I you on too, here man. on my shit? I don't shit. say nothing. I be wanting to say, boy, if y'all really could, I wish I could just hit the button and talk to you, boy. But you know what? I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> if people's uh, real-time location and information was attached to their comment, they say half of the it would be no fucking comments <laughs> anywhere. Everything would That's be, you're so great. True. You're yeah, great. Yeah, they wouldn't you know, do it. Man, people just be, you know. Or sometimes what I can't stand is, you know how we all clip up our interviews yeah. and people say something about a clip and Drop I'm like. Drop the whole interview. And I'm uh, not even just that. You get that too. <laughs> or they'll say something and I'm like, just wait for the whole interview. Yeah. You'll see yeah. exactly. exactly. Like, you can't draw a conclusion from just this one little exactly. clip. Just wait. You know what I do? I, that's when I get to dry snitching <laughs> on Vlad. I'll be like, man, Vlad be on, on <laughs> clip 42 and you over here fucking with me. <laughs> like, <laughs> because you, but I think it's because I think it's a it's a thing where I don't know I don't listen to them yeah. I know already for me and I'll say this for all the people who watch yeah. it man is that I know that the engagement on a clip mm -hmm. is better than an engagement on a hour long video for sure so I'm just trying to make sure that I yeah. cause this is a, a, a computer that we're dealing yes. with yes. this is not human people exactly so you gotta make sure you calculate your moves correctly yeah for Especially sure starting up I started out yes. just dropping an hour long video I didn't even know and then I was mm. reading and some little white kid was like do you know you can't do that I'm like damn he right mm. yeah <laughs> but you know what it's preference cause yeah. I, I, I've had this conversation cause I mean we in the same lane yeah and it's preference cause me myself when I see some shit that's two hours long I don't wanna watch it I'm not watching it I prefer the clips to be very honest yeah, with right. you so it's preference you have people that'll be on my but then what it is is they get but, antsy when it's good but then if you're watching the clips and all the clips are so good you can't you will sit down and watch that is. two hour yeah, yeah, episode because yeah. you're like no you know this gonna be a very that's good, a good interview thing. I told uh, I think I don't know which one I'm with. I told somebody this morning I say you know really the clips is like cutting up a steak for you right <laughs> right. you know I'm cutting you a steak uh -huh. and I'm giving you the good parts I'm not letting you eat the bone you know what I'm saying? Now see me, now see me, my analogy was different. I was like, you know, we whipping this thing. You know, <laughs> I'm stretching it. Yeah, it is stretching and it. And chopping it up, Listen, you know what I mean? did that analogy, yeah. up, but I'm trying to be nice. Turning so one or two. No, but my analogy is of when you're watching a TV sitcom series. Yeah. And you know how they always end it at that spot and be like, okay, I can't wait till next week. And at least that one, you wait until a whole week to yeah. see it. And you get, you're mad. You're mad because yeah. you're like, you want to see the rest of them. Like, why but they do, do I that have on to purpose. wait till next week? That's why yeah. I, I love, my daughter put me onto anime. Yeah. And when you're reading, you can actually pay. Yeah. To watch the next right, week one right. now, yeah, we can do that, that with I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that option together yeah. for us too. I mean, Vlad's better. doing it. Vlad's yeah. definitely doing, doing that. Yeah, but you can only watch up to a certain mm. amount that they drop. So if they only drop five, but yeah. then when you reach the five, you still left a cliffhanger. You're yeah. like. But at the end of the day, that's a good thing because it, it means that the content is resonating. They right. want it. That's the only thing. They right. just they want they it. They want it. You know, so yeah. you know you're doing something. You're doing right. something right. Yeah. Well, I want to I want to push over into the. Uh, but at any rate, man, I want to talk about uh, the Cat Williams incident because mm -hmm. that's a. That, I don't want to talk about it alone. I'm not going to do you <laughs> like that. But I do want to talk about. There's a couple yeah. of things in there I've seen. Yeah. That was a fat guy that was there. Yeah. I'm thinking that was Phase on Lou. It wasn't. I sure was wanted to make it. I was going to tell him. You know, I called him. Like. Say, nigga. Nah, it, it was you. <laughs> it wasn't Faison. But it was a fat, yeah. uh, he said a fat comedian. Fat yeah. comedian. Like, I'm, who, there, there's a couple other fat well, comedians. Who was he, Corey, he wasn't a known was one. Was Corey Holcomb fat? No, no it wasn't Corey. Him fat. No. He kind of built. No, nah, I wasn't Corey. But okay, but if was we got the right name, Bruce, would you Bruce? say? No, he ain't gonna You tell. wouldn't even know the name. If oh, you got really? the right name, so I would. not a popular person? No. Okay, no. well, he, he, he was popular on the, like, the local LA scene. He was trying to get a job with, I guess, helping to write for Cat. 
you okay. know, uh, I, I believe so. Um, I believe that's what he was. Bro, there but for. let me just ask you, man, why is you out here playing basketball, taking this boy to the hoop? Boy, I, got, <laughs> you did, I wish they had phones back then. Man, you know? listen, <laughs> no, we did. This did. Uh, no, this, this was, was, only, was man. This? this was two thousand, maybe fourteen. Y'all had phones, but yeah. you didn't record. Nah, Niggas man. weren't recording well, like you that. You got to think, man. Cat, cat was a. And listen, this is the well, thing this about this. Fifteen year old choked him. This was before that. Them. This was before that. That was a hell of a fight, yeah, man. Yeah, that was before <laughs> that. <laughs> so you sent him into that shock, that, that whooping sent him on into that. He was gone already, though. Yeah. I think he had. I, I think he was having a just breakdown during yeah, that time. Yeah, for sure. I, I it's mean, pressure, man. I mean, this is the thing about it. Me and Cat were really tight friends. You know, Cat was in my first movie that I produced. I had produced a movie called Young American Gangsters. Um, he was Cat Williams at the time, you know, so he could have charged me. He could have been on some Hollywood shit, but he didn't. He showed up for me, gave me the whole day for nothing. You know what I mean? Wow. So um, I know Cat. Cat is a good dude. He has a great, great fucking heart. You know what I mean? Sometimes. Faison said the same thing. He's got a great fucking heart. He he's tried a to buy him dude. some shoes. Yeah. And he was like, man, I told him, I can't let you buy me no shoes. Mm -hmm. That's why I thought it was Faison when he told man, me that story. Listen, bro, <laughs> I, I can remember when he was into it with Faison when I was with Cat. You know, and him and Faison was beefing, or he had uh, beef with Faison's brother. Was that when he put a gun on him to yeah, empty the gun? Yeah, unloaded gun. You was there? <laughs> no, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Why would do that? Why would someone do that? That's <laughs> crazy. That's Cat Williams. Listen, I love Cat, This man. is one thing about Cat, man. That Cat, I don't care. He might still be mad at me, but that's my nigga. That's my brother. Cat a little nigga, but Cat, Cat will go. He got heart. <laughs> Cat don't care. Win, lose, or draw. Like that shit with Will Smith and, and, and Chris Rock, that with. shit would have went different. That shit would have went different. <laughs> Grab that nigga, I ain't close Cat, Cat would have got dead on his ass. No. I promise you. I promise you. He Cat would have got like a person that's just all mouth and nothing behind. No, him. No, no, I don't think that. No. Cat gonna crash out. He gonna crash all when the I way. I see him fight that little boy. Look, if you fight yeah. a little boy, it don't matter who. No, he don't care about losing. Yeah. Cat gonna go. He don't care about losing. <laughs> he so, gonna try. He gonna try. Yeah. You say so? He went. He went ballistic after you hit he that did. last. What was it? Eleven? Y'all went one yeah. to eleven. Yeah, we and were. And when you hit eleven, look, Listen. look, you, you. What was it? Was it a layup or was it a jumper? Nah, nah. I, po I posted him up. You know oh, what I'm saying? Wrong, I, I used the body look, on him. Because, you know, he got the speed. Cat, cat fast. You know, he so, one of them quick little niggas. So, so you, 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 you posted him up and gave him. I posted it. him up. I oh, had to give him. I mean, man. you got to think. I'm 100 pounds heavier than him. I'm a foot and a half taller than him. You know, so I told him what was going to happen. I could have seen Only a foot and a half? Huh? Only yeah, a foot and a half? Yeah, about yeah. a foot and a half. He just, he walking the nigga to the goal. Yeah. Just walking walked him, him to the goal. I I walked him down and hit, and we were playing. Think about it, we were playing for Desert Eagles, bro. Playing for guns. <laughs> <laughs> and so once I beat him, I told him, I said, "Man, you can keep your little raggedy gun." And he, yeah, he went ballistic <laughs> on me, bro. Oh man, I love it, man, because he had that. I, he done, and he done shook back a little bit. Yeah, he yeah. done shook back to where he yeah. ain't even focused on the crap no more. So right. he must have. <clears throat> I don't know. You know that that lifestyle has to be tough on all y'all. Yeah. Let me be yeah, real. for sure. Because everybody's always looking, and you trying to hold your composure throughout every single incident, man. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you what it is. I Especially think sometimes. In today's day and age. Yeah, yeah. I think like what I learned from P and what I what and I think why we're kindred spirits is see you have some people that don't know how to turn off. Right. Yeah. See, for us, it's a job, you know, like I'm not big court every day, all day. Just when I when it's time for that, when I go home, I'm Courtney, you know, when I'm out doing what I, I'm that, you know. So where you have some people that they're that that celebrity or that, you know, brand or whatever all day, every day, they never turn off. And that's where you lose yourself. Yeah. You become that. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So that's where I think some people struggle. Like I, I think Kat. I mean, you know, I, I don't know for sure, but I know people that were close to him. For him, it was more of a, a, a mental, chemical thing. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, I never seen Cat do drugs. I, I was around him a lot. I yeah. never seen him do no drugs, no dope, nothing like that. That was just him naturally. Yeah, I think it was just whatever, you know, he gets in these manic states or whatever, you know what I mean? Because I think he did have bipolar or something like that. So that's why I was able to get past our little thing. You know, I charged it to his mind and not his heart. Cause I know his heart. You know, I've seen him give jewelry to people. I've seen him give money to I people. I've seen it. him give cars to people. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Just cause they needed it, you know? And That's and he's never love. wanted the, you know, the accolades for it or nothing like that. He's a good dude. He'll help you. 
with your career if you can. You know what I'm saying? Now, he's not perfect. Now, I mean, he's not above doing some fuck shit, you know, mm -hmm. but for the most part, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. Yeah. That's, that's what matter, man. Like, when you can <clears throat> see, because that's people put people in boxes. I say this on mm -hmm. a lot of episodes. We can't do that, you right. know, because people are always evolving. For so sure. you can't just give up on a person for here sure. and leave him now forever. Nah, man. And I think that's why people make their biggest mistake yep. at on people. I think that's a sense of immaturity, like I always say. And because you got to let people grow and evolve, absolutely. man. Don't hold them back. And none of us are in a position to condemn anyone. Come on, or judge. Come no, on, no. man. That's why I always say I lead with grace and mercy. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because dope. I know I need it. You know, I, I'm not infallible. Fuck, I know I fuck up all the time. All and I may long. misspeak and need somebody to, <laughs> you know, forgive me for some shit. So all I, day I long. lead with that. Yeah, I know I'm the one, man. I mess up in a minute, nigga. I will be having to call you and tell you I'm sorry, man. Yeah. I, should, I went yeah. off on that. Boy, I shouldn't have did that, man. Right. I should have just chilled, bro. I just did that. I meant the, just what we was talking about. I had to run down a nigga uh, in Kansas City for talking shit on social media. It felt good in real time. But then after the fact, I was like, Damn, that was wrong. I shouldn't have did I that. I shouldn't have did Nigga that. had his kids with him. Yeah. You know, and I'm out here, and and why why I'm doing that, motherfuckers is seeing me, like, man, can I get a picture? <laughs> so I'm taking a picture, then going back to arguing with this nigga. You know what I mean? And I was like- And somebody I videotaping that argument. I guarantee I don't you. think, I don't know. It ain't came out yet. But, <laughs> but what it was is I, I felt irresponsible because I created- um, a scenario that could have went bad for both of us. Yeah, you know, I could have did something to him. He could have did something to me over some bullshit. Really, yeah. You know, yeah. I was right in in standing on what I was standing on. But at the end it's of the how day, how you how you um, react to the situation, right, face right, in front of you. Because right. in life, we are tested every day. Yeah, in different ways. And I always tell everybody, we don't live our lives for ourselves. Right. And at the end of the day, you don't know what he went through, <clears throat> what he's been going through, right. to make him lash out at somebody else for sure he, you true know. story so yeah. by you showing being a bigger person that's a lesson that he could take and mm -hmm. pass that along to somebody else right you know what i mean right hopefully you know hopefully. uh I, I you know i was in the in the real because you know we're human too mm -hmm. you know i try to be better i try to rise above you know um and, and i don't think it was necessarily a disreputable moment for me but when i see him the next time i see him i am going to pull him to the side and say hey my nigga i meant what i said but right. I was wrong for pressing you like that and creating that environment of intimidation and we it could have got ugly, you know what yeah. I mean? And I, I opened the door for that and I actually was like, shit, we can do that, you know, mm -hmm. and but I was in my feelings, you know, I was, you know, we at, all. At the end uh, of the day, we all can get yeah, caught up in a moment, man. We regress. Man. And yeah. We, yeah, we have to figure yeah. it out as we go, man. We, ain't nobody perfect, bro. Right. So right. that's the whole game, man. Yeah. You know, I know for sure. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I, I, I was looking at how, and, and was it really true? I got to go back to Cab for a yeah. minute. You said that you was riding when you was leaving after you had to hit that last point and you bogarted him. Mm -hmm. that, that that somebody came up behind you. It was him, yeah, he and did. just nailed you from the back. Man, he yeah. just rear ended the car like boom. Yep, rear ended my car. But did, did it total it? Yeah, they end up totaling. Did it you? Out. Yeah, but you kept going. I kept going. But yeah. the car, how much damage? The gas, you know, on the movies it would have blew up. He was but, in an escalade. <laughs> <laughs> he was in an escalade. I was in a that year Tahoe. And, okay. um, uh, you know, my survival uh, instincts kicked in because it was on a real dark street. And, okay. you know, my, my spider. What was y'all at again? Uh, in Malibu. Okay. Yeah. Is that, that's well, not we the hills. We was on Canaan, yeah. That's we the was hills. On, yeah. We that was nigga on Bobby the dark could have killed you. Yeah, absolutely could have. Yeah, absolutely could have. So and, when he hit you, mm -hmm. you basically, now you, you don't know who it is at the time. Well, no. So what happened was as I was leaving, um, I, I, I felt something because before, prior to me hitting the game point, which we knew was going to happen, uh, he went, he had somebody go call some people. Okay. You know, and I, I kind of was like, uh, you know, I, you know, I know, I know this shit. And I, I heard you say at the, at the time, Suge was his manager. Suge was his so manager. all this adding up for me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. So. Right. And so. Uh, by the time that he had them go call someone, it was probably maybe almost an hour. So they had enough time to get there and they did. And so. Uh, when I hit the corner, it was um, it was like a Bentley parked to the side with the dome light off, but the door open. Okay. So I, now, mind you, Canaan is a desolate street, especially at night. It's dark. The signal ain't well. That's where Kevin Hart had that accident. Oh, you really? Yeah. Okay. And so <clears throat> I figured, you know, I know what it is. I figured maybe it was on some bullshit. I can be a cheerleader for foolishness. So I rolled my windows down. 
thinking that okay, I just gotta get down out of the out of the car, you know. So when I rolled by the Bentley, I had already leveled, you know. I had a FN five seven. Oh yeah, you weren't trying to hear. You know what I'm saying? So um, did not nothing come from it? So I was like, oh, okay, but there was still a little something. So I was watching my rearview mirror, and um, I say about two or three minutes later, I just see headlights just coming fast as hell in the in the uh, rearview mirror, and. Yeah, I didn't know that it was that it was an Escalade. I thought it was that Bentley because it was coming so fast. Yeah, and it just—I thought they were gonna come on side of me, and they just just ran into the back of me, and it was just like a gust of smoke. My ears start ringing, you know. And the car the airbag almost, didn't go off. Nope, the airbag didn't that nigga go off. That thug man, uh, yeah, Cat man. Williams, who ain't uh, yeah. trying to hear I it. never knew it was him. No, no, I this never knew it was boy, him. This wild and so but when did this you find wild. <laughs> so so well so what happened was I so. You know, my survival instincts kicked in. I said, okay, it's dark out here. Let me keep going. So yes, I kept going. The car was, and so it was another car that came. Oh, man. You know, and so, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So at that to, point, you had to let them know, I, nigga, I, back exactly. off, back up, back exactly. up, back up. So I had to get them up off of me. And so. Why, um, did, why did the car behind you go? Did it stop? Well, no, nah, they came up. It was it was some cats. They was trying no, I'm to get talking about the when, he, when he hit you. Yeah, because he totaled it. He told it he done. had to stop right there. It was there. done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looked like he hit a train. This is what somebody told me. They yeah. said, man, the front of it looked like he hit a train. That you nigga know. would come in with Man, it. he was cutting ass, bro. And so uh, I had to get them up off of me. Then these fools came back. Like and then I had thank God for the FN. You yeah, know what because I mean? they were they wasn't yeah, trying to hold they down. They wasn't trying. Yeah, and out so, there it wasn't nothing out there to even put it our sight on it. So. No, no, that's what I'm saying. It's we on a windy yeah. road, and so all this time, um, the um, you're a heck of a driver. Not yeah, go off. Mm -hmm. man, man, listen, man, man, on Star was was talking to me the whole time. I didn't even realize it. I thought maybe I was dead or something. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> that's I, God talking to yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> because they was like, "Yeah, sir, are you okay? We see you in a high impact collision. Do you need help?" And they said it about six times you before I realized what it was. Because right. your adrenaline is running. my adrenaline mm -hmm. is going. And then you know when you're in those type of situations, you know you get you focus tunnel vision. On other things, yeah, right. and you get tunnel vision, and your ears go numb. You know it's the adrenaline. So um, finally, I was like, "Oh, I was like, yeah, I was like, I got hit, but." You know, I didn't want to stop. I started making up some excuses and shit. They was like, well, the police are waiting on you when you come out. Because, you know, it was a windy road. road. Yeah. So they said, yeah. when you come out, they're waiting on you. I was like, oh, shit. Because I didn't know what the status of these other yeah. niggas was. You know what I mean? So I had to stop and, you know what I'm saying, dump the whoop de wop and yeah, woop like, Yeah, everything so, okay. Yeah. So they weren't still chasing you at this no, point? No, no, they I backed up. He made okay. them get back yeah. with the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? You know, said thank God for the FN. Yeah. So... Uh, uh, so I, the police met me and they was, they, they hadn't known, they didn't know what, they just knew it was an accident and they were like, damn. So I remember them looking at me, looking at my, my, my physique and they was like, damn, bro. And looking at my car and they was like, man, if you wasn't built like how you are, you probably would have been hurt. Hurt. Yeah. But all this shit was, was, hurting. was hurting. It was tight and shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the impact. Yeah. And so I, I felt it, the, the days coming, I bet. you know what I mean? But, um, so I ended up going home. And I'm calling Cat, calling Cat. He wasn't answering. But I, I kind of knew, you know, it was some fuck shit mixed up in but there. But come on, man. You know that. And you know Cat wasn't for the answer that phone. Yeah, yeah. He never did. He no, never so did. So you haven't talked to him to this day? So me? listen, this is the thing about I want to hear if you talked to him ever. I, I, I did one time. Where? On IG Live. Oh, y'all went live together. No, no. It was, it was, Who was live first? And then he, no, he was live. And you jumped on. So this is what happened. If y'all remember that period where he was going live and he was going in on Kevin Hart every yeah, day, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was during that period. And I just happened to tap in on one of his lives, right? And I, I, I said something. I forgot what I said, but I seen him. He kind of looked at it like, oh. And so I think I said, bring me on, nigga. You know what I mean? <laughs> And he pulled and me he in. Did. He pulled me in. It was an awkward exchange because this is exactly what we said. He he never looked at the camera. He wouldn't look at me. And I but we were talking in code. It was funny because I said, Yeah, bro. I said, uh, you know, we need to rap. Like, you know, you need to holler at me. He was like, I avoid you. And so I was like, <laughs> that's, that's what he said. I, said. I avoid you. And I was like, why, bro? You don't have to, you know. And, and I was like, if I, you know, if I wanted something to happen, it would have happened already. I said, mm -hmm. well, we, you know, we can holler, bro. And he was like, uh, he said, when you met me or something, he said, what, what was I? I said, you was you, you was a comedian. I said, when you met me, what was I? He said, when I met you, you were a gangster. 
You know, <laughs> this is what he said. This is what he said. And so, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a true a story. Yeah. Yeah. This is a true story. And then somehow or another, it clicked off. It went. I don't know if he hung it up he or whatever. Up. But the comments, people was like, "Hold up, that was a real nigga conversation. That was some real <laughs> shit going on." Right. It was because it was. I didn't expect him to pull me on. I was laying in the bed. Yeah, you wow. know what I mean. But that's the only time that I, I have talked to. Well, him you know, after you, that. you you did. Uh, you, I heard about the Kansas incident where yeah. he decided to go to yeah. Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, and I was still in my feelings. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this was how long after that though? Shit, this that was maybe two years. Yeah, you went a year or two years. And this, was, like this, this was before the call, before the uh, yes. online. Yeah, okay. this was before. Yeah, before. But the that IG. night you let it go. You said that after that incident, where that yeah. was a God thing. I let right it go. There. Yeah. That was a God thing. Yeah. I'm telling you that yeah. right there. Hell but yeah. that, that that the way you explain that. Yep. Yes, for his you, mom to be yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. That was that was crazy. a God and, thing. And, and, and even if you think about the guy that was there that yeah. I had, you know, being the son. He yeah he 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 got killed last year. Are you serious? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. See? Yeah. So are you still in touch with the mom? Uh, um, yeah, here and there. Here yeah. and there. Um, but yeah, man, it was uh yeah, that that was I was still in my feelings. That was my ego. And people around me was telling me that. You know, they was like, bruh, leave that nigga alone. Mm -hmm. Like they told me. They was like, nigga, what P say? Leave leave him alone. I know what P said. He been told. He said, dude, he said <laughs> He told oh, you don't go. <laughs> he told me don't go in the first place. When it happened, P was like, nigga, I told you about fucking with that nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know that nigga half crazy. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, bro, but that's my boy. I didn't think he'd do it to me. He was like, nigga, he crazy. You know what I'm saying? But but P got a lot of love for Cat, too. You know, he really does. Um, and we all do. Like I said, it was just that that period. But um, like I said, I always will have a love and, and a, a respect and, a, you know, somewhat of an allegiance to Cat yeah. because of I know who he really is. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 definitely. So we'll have our time. It's you that know bipolar I mean? part. It's, it's so, it was somebody else who did that. Right. Not the truth I had here. to I had to let time go by right. to, to, to receive that. that. Yeah, I gotta get yeah. you. I gotta move forward to this. Uh, I'm jealous of you. Uh -huh. You 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 didn't interview the greats. You you interviewed <laughs> Ice T. Oh, you yeah. interview you interview. Shout out to Ice T. Nigga, you interview J, J Prince. 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 Respect, nigga. Like Respect. that's the one I've been shooting for. I got all kind of little old ways I'm trying to get him on the yeah. show. Other and and jobs. I've been I've been really working. Yeah. And he don't even realize it. All the all the interviews I do evolve around the fact I got to get J yeah. Prince on this on on this platform. Yeah. I think it'll have one day because we. But how do you be in Texas doing what we doing and not even get? We gotta him get him. We gonna get him. Yeah. You'll get him. Yeah, we, yeah, go, we Jay, keep working. Yeah, yeah. you'll get it. I, I think it's just a timing thing. Yeah, just reach out to him. Yeah, yeah. I want to make it right though. You know, yeah. it's a it's a few people. Bum B is certain ones that I For have. Sure. I have access to reach out to, but I'm yeah. working to make sure like everything I do yeah. is set up in a way to where I feel like this is where I want to be. I told you I'm, I'm over here calculating mm -hmm. my steps. Yeah, for sure. But I know it's been a blessing to be able to calculate our steps, mm -hmm. you know, but how was that, man, with Jay Prince? You guys have a long running relationship because mm -hmm. I've heard P say that that was one of his influences. For sure. So so how was that and, and what, what were you trying to get out of inter interviewing him? Man, the thing about interviewing Jay Prince, that was definitely on my bucket list. Okay. Um, and I was fortunate enough, like I said, I only been in this game eight months. So yeah, yeah. I start off Dope. with the But you're killing list. it. You you, yeah. you working to me over over yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. And um, you know, Jay actually Julia Beverly, she quarterbacked that uh for yeah. me. You yeah, we working saying? already. Yeah, Julia, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, shout out to the homegirl Julia. Julia Beverly, Julia man. Beverly. Hey, shout out to Julia Beverly. Yes, yes. She's supposed to be on the show. Okay, yeah. that's the homegirl. No, that's I'm my working. partner. I'm working, that's man. my partner. And so um Man, I told Jay, you know, I grew up with rap a lot. And I remember, I told Jay, I said, I remember when you was James Smith, you know. So I, I was studying Jay and really in Easy e before I even became, you know, aware of Pete. Mm. You know what I'm saying? For the music. Yeah, for the music. And just, I don't know, Jay was always an enigma. And, and I was always kind of fascinated with who he was and how he moved, even as far back as the Ghetto Boy records. I didn't like, even know, man. <clears throat> you didn't? No, I, like, I didn't, I knew, but I was, I was so caught up in Scarface lyrics, man. But see, no, but this is the thing, bro. When you go, I, I go back to the uh, Ghetto Boys yeah. as far back as, as making trouble, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah, I, so, I get it. So back then, you remember, bro, yeah. when you would buy the tape, bro, you would read the credits. Credits, yeah. You would everything. see all of that. Yeah. So when I would hear his voice and I put it together, he was Jay, Lil J, you yeah, know, Jay Lil Smith. Jay. And it was just something about him that I gravitated toward, you know. So as the years went on and as I got older and understood who he was, I always wanted to know more, you know. So I followed. So, of course, you know, being with P, 
then I get an extension of that love and that access. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I always studied he, him and Easy E and even Shug to an extent. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I studied yeah. them. You know, I, I, I'm a student did you meet Easy? No. But oh, what I didn't almost tell you is we almost went to Ruthless before No Limit. We oh. actually wound, wound up I, at I, No I, Limit. I heard you say that. We wound up at No Limit just because Easy died. But mm. Easy, you, that was the one when you said, oh, man, I got, I got no tail. I did do no tail. I ain't been used. Because I like, <laughs> I like organic and sure. I don't want the same interview other but people you know have. What I though? You know what I hate about that? Because yeah. I do the same thing too. But then. Everything be flowing and you enjoy yourself and when you're done and you look back and you know it's like, oh, I could have asked, asked that. that. Yeah. I didn't ask that. I'm going to work him over though. Don't even trip. It's Just all go good. Let's I got, get it. I got something for him over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's I got something it. for him over here. A list. Look at that list, baby. Look at that. I look at that. It. You see, that's, that's long. I'm talking about all of that. Okay. It's yeah, all so good. I'm ready let's for him. It. Yeah, yeah. Now let's talk about the ruthless, uh, uh, how you was, you it, you kept on calling yep. and it was a lady and you, yep. wherever she is today, we don't know Cassandra where. Where is she at today? We don't know. But we looking for you. She's still I, around because Lil E told me she's still oh, around. Oh yeah? yeah, so you you got to send us some you know roses or flowers yeah, or something for just sure. to say thank you, man. She was super nice. You she didn't have that. to be. Yeah, that lady would talk to me. I would call and shit and be like, man, easy E there. You get our tape. She'd be like, yes, Courtney, we got your tape. We got all five of them. He's going to get. It. He's on tour right now, you know. So finally, she so had you hit took me. That persistence with you, the same persistence yep. that got you. Yep. With Pete. Same thing. You That's where I got that. it from. Yeah, the that's where time. I got it from. I was getting on folks' nerves. I didn't mm. care, you know what I mean? And so, uh, yeah, we, and so finally she had told me, yeah, easy, listen to your tape. They really like it. Woo, woo, woo. Somebody will be in touch with you. And yeah, probably maybe three months after that, he passed away. Wow. So yeah, went back to the drawing board. So what did you like about Easy? Easy, he was once a dog from around uh, the way. You know what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, my favorite Easy E song is probably that "No More Questions." Okay, okay, you know what I'm yeah, yeah. But I, yeah. I, man, it was a bunch of them, man. Yeah. People don't realize that was a time when he was dropping stuff too, back to back. Yeah. He was doing that. Yeah. And even after him and Dre them fell out or whatever, yeah. he always kept going exactly. with the music after he took off. With yeah, it. for sure. I, I know the the movie Straight Outta Compton was definitely enlightening but yeah. is a I'd like to see a carry on of how easy really from his perspective it. Yeah, yeah that would be yeah. dope right absolutely yeah. yeah and I hope they get that done his I hope son, they do how's that. his son doing on, on any other is he um, working yeah, on any well, of that me, me and Lil E cool that's okay. my partner yeah so yeah they working on all of that I would love to see that they happen because that. That. I was a big fan of that too yeah you know what it was man I don't it, I it was it was just the aura, I guess. I, I always had a CEO inside of me before I realized it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that just how Lil J and Easy, how they carried it, you know, from being the rap, the street shit. I just I, I could just identify that shit when I was young. And right. I was enamored by it. Well, you know? P, it, it, with P, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the exactly. same type it's spirit. It's the same thing, yeah. same spirit. So I just gravitated toward that. So I was always intrigued by Easy and even Ice T. Same thing, you know, because when I heard Ice T was the first gangster rap record that I heard, which was Squeeze the Trigger. Yeah, you know what I mean. Was that the one when she had that that uh, nice outfit on? This girl no, on there? No, no, that, that was his power. Old, that was yeah, power. that was power with the yeah. black on. And yeah, no, he had on the blue suit. No, I'm talking about the girl. I ain't talking about him. No, she had on a white <laughs> white bathing suit. Yeah, she was ready though. I know because I have big five by five paintings in my house. This yeah. was a long time ago, yeah. so I'm, I'm like, that's my first. You know, yeah. we didn't have. The, the phones like everybody got. Nah, nah. We had the covers. We exactly. that's all we had. All to. you had was the covers. You know what I'm saying? So, so even, you still got it. I, I have paintings in my house. I have five by five oil paintings, five mm. feet by five feet of Ice T's power. I see it every day of the front cover and that the back. Boy, serious about it? Yeah. Did you? Tell, I didn't even get to. I got to get more into that interview. I get yeah, to see him through. Yeah. Because you got what it was is you know these were things that were really influential as I yeah. was growing up. You know what I mean? Like power. Like that album cover, because what it was is like when I heard Ice T, he was painting me a picture of what I was seeing happening in my community. You see, I didn't have any older brothers and shit. So when I'm seeing dope houses and the gang shit and I'm seeing people cousin me and blood me, I'm not really understanding the context. But when I hear Ice T, oh, that's what's out. going on. Oh, a high roller. Oh, dope. Selling. Oh, that's why these motherfuckers across the street. Oh, Dayton's vote. OK, I see. That's what it is. You see what I'm saying? So where. Ice T kind of came from a perspective of like a reporter, like this is what it is, this is the game. But when I heard Easy E and NWA, these motherfuckers sound like they was the people he was talking about. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. Like, yeah, oh, these the game bangers. Right. You know what I'm saying? Colors, so, man. I remember whooping yeah. some niggas after the uh, movie, after yeah. the Colors, man. We whooped them boys up out there. 
You know, just the movie. Y'all, y'all, had, had, the gang, y'all had the gang shit here and Come Dallas. on, man. The gang stuff has been everywhere. I was down by Shreveport, so okay. it was real down there. Yeah, like, yeah. you Shreveport was one of those places, man, where we seen the gang. Yeah. I was actually from six miles on the Texas side, but mm-hmm. Shreveport was like 20 some miles away. Okay. So I seen all of that. I was hustling and going into these neighborhoods mm-hmm. where I was seeing mm-hmm. all. But I'm a hustler, so yeah. I wasn't into it, but I seen it. You right. know what I'm saying? Right, I'm about right. the money. Right. They, they doing the color thing. Okay, I see you over yeah, there, yeah. but I'm going over to the hood. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I wasn't trying to hear it, that. Easy was the same way. I mean, yeah. he was affiliated with Neighborhood and Kelly Park, but yeah. you know, he, he migrated and Function with with all the sets because he was a hustler. I gotta know? ask you, do you think mm-hmm. that because I had asked Melvin Farm, I had them mm-hmm. on the show, and who was it? I, I want to say it was Nino Cappuccino. Yeah, uh, I from asked Bounty him, Hunters. Bounty Hunters. Mm-hmm. I asked him, and I had a guy on here that was from Texas, and mm-hmm. it was like, do you think that they respect what's going on outside of L.A. like that? I just mm-hmm. never seen the. I, 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 I think it's a. I think a, it's a thing where you can you can be a part of it when you go to that town right. but when you in your town when you from where that's yeah. at I just don't know about the genuineness of it I'm gonna tell you I have a thought on that too I know what you mean um, it's definitely watered down that's what it, I'm thinking it is watered down even where I'm from I'm from the faux block yeah. it's a crip neighborhood yeah. it was colonized by yeah. 60s and east coast crips from LA yeah. but it's watered down that's you what know? I was thinking um, but then I'm gonna tell you what where it gets corny to me I, I can understand when you have you know, uh, independent sets, uh, you know, like like a nigga in Kansas City claiming Hoover. Yeah. That don't make sense to me. Because <laughs> we don't have a Hoover Street, <laughs> you know, or claiming Grape Street. That's but corny But you understand shit. that. Some yeah. people don't. They that's just going corny. with it, bro. That, that's corny. Now, now, if we Crips, <sighs> I don't like, know this about is some that. Kansas City shit. I got to say, my cousins from uh, 40s, they was from 40s, yeah. and they came, my first cousins from 40s, Crenshaw, yeah. and they come straight to to my hood right. and say that's what we rocking with yeah then I had to be like that's what we rocking yeah, with yeah see but I think that's corny but I you think, see what I'm saying but yeah. if they're from there though that's different if you're from they, there no I'm talking about the niggas this, this, the, this. the locals right. no my, my cousins I, are from corny, there but yeah in his but they case, come to not. my we, right. sister's kids yeah, and they keep different. coming every summer we gotta fight every summer cause these niggas keep on shooting and fighting and stealing my guns and taking them back <laughs> to LA and I'm like man I don't know I think I know I put some work in yeah yeah. but I'm only claiming it because of yes. them. So you were, like me, I was affiliated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I never, and it's so funny because people will argue this, but I never been like a crip. I never been the one to bang, what's up, cuz, nigga on crip, you know? <laughs> no, I never did that. Now, did I have issues because maybe niggas around me was fighting exactly. on that, but then I got they back. That's right. So I get sucked into it. You know what I'm saying? That's but no, exactly I've never been a gangbanger. No. Man, that's crazy because you would think being in LA <laughs> like that in Kansas yeah. getting influenced. Yeah. Oh, here you go with the blue rag. Nah, you, know? bro, I, you, ain't, you can't catch me with a blue rag. But see, then somebody would pull up a video that I had that from like 2000. I had on a, a blue rag shirt. Ooh. The shirt was like the blue rag. Snoop Dogg. Yeah, <laughs> just like Snoop Dogg. I had that in like 99, 2000. So, you know, I was just affiliated. I, I never you was a get, gang uh, get, I have one question okay, before. I want, okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, with all that you've been doing ever since mm-hmm. you was, what, 18 mm-hmm. coming up? Because mm-hmm. um, we all got to go one day. But yeah. if there is one thing that you want everybody to remember you for, mm-hmm. what would that thing be? Wow. That's a heavy question. Um, well, I, I, you know, I, I think that I would want my, my life to be a testament of, um, you know, um, overcoming, you know, um, and and I would say, uh, you know, I, I, when I like when I got into doing the podcast, right, I wanted to, to really show the balance and show that niggas can evolve you know i wanted to represent the evolved nigga from the hood you know like when people ask me about my show i say it's nigga shit and black excellence all in one there it is so um you know i just want to i would want people to know that anything is possible i'm just a a kansas city boy that had a dream you know what i'm saying and and uh no reference point of anything that i ever you know i built businesses outside of entertainment you know that Mm -hmm. were successful i built i built a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio you know i have other businesses that are successful outside of entertainment i'm not formally educated i graduated high school so i would want people to look at me and see me as a testament that you know anything is possible if you put your mind to it you know you put your trust in god you put the work in 
you know, and you make the necessary changes because putting the work in is not just doing the work. It's also being able to make the necessary changes and be pliable. And, and doing um, the research. And doing the research, you know, doing the work, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I always say inconsistency, you know, consistency is more important than perfection any day. Right. Um, so I would want that to be what people saw. Like, wow, this dude, you know, he just had a dream and he went with it, you know. And uh, like I said, I'm not perfect, you know, and I've been able to I've overcome a lot. You know, um, you know, I'm sure there are other stories that are, are, are worse than mine. You know, everybody has a story, but, mm. you know, I, I've had to, you know, I've buried probably, you know, three, four dozen friends, you know, lost family members, buried a mom. Um, you know, I had, a t I had children uh, early in life, you know, having a wife, having a family and having to navigate you know, and trying sticking to, with the person that you actually have. Right, right. And, and then and then, you know, learning how to really be a man behind closed doors. Some mm -hmm. of that shit you figuring out, you know, in real time, you know, mm -hmm. you putting the front up, you acting like you know what you're doing. But behind closed doors, you trying to figure shit out. You know what I mean? Because I don't have a reference point of what it what a husband looks like. You or know, what a father. Looks yeah. Like. Or, or any of that. Like even with my son, when I first had my son, he's 22 now. I didn't know how to I I I. I I didn't know how to show him affection because I had never had affection shown to me by a man other than my father-in-law once I got grown. But, you know, I didn't know. I never had a man tell me he loved me or hugged me or embraced me. So, shit, I was giving my, my son dapping shit. It felt awkward at first. Like, well, I guess I'm supposed natural. to. It's right. not natural. So I had to peep that within myself and do the work and say, damn, that's why you like that. So now, I mean, he's 22. I hug him and kiss him all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, that's dope. so, you know, just I think just doing the work and being able to evolve, being open to evolution and changing, you know, that's why a lot of niggas be stuck, man. They be stuck mentally, you know, and emotionally. They don't have the, the mental and emotional fortitude. They haven't allowed themselves to. You know, evolve mm. like that. Mm -hmm. You just—that's uh, dope, man. I'm the—I'm we the same the same thing. Yep. All our brothers so much alike. Yep. It's, it, it, it's so funny to me, but mm -hmm. we try to act like we so different, but we yeah. so much so, alike. So that's why yep. I don't even speak on it. Like I say, it's so mm -hmm. much in these interviews that mm -hmm. it's like, dang, man. You know, uh, hold up, man. Money Moses is coming in, man. This so this a youngster right here, man. It, 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 I keep the, I gotta keep me a young man around me, man. One of the young, this brother was he helped me pull this old table up in here. Yeah, yeah, that, that's when it's What's real. Up, bro? This up, is Money Moses, man. He from Louisiana, Monroe, yeah. man. Okay, and uh, he been on here before, right? He always here. Okay, now I'm about to say when I, I say seen he him, helped me drug the, drag this table when I in seen here. Him, I was like, I seen dude before. Yeah. It's on this <laughs> show. <laughs> that's the only. I get that everywhere I go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because of this show. Because yeah. I always bring him in. Um, you know, God put him in my life, and so mm -hmm. that's that, that's nice. one of the things that I, he all, he ain't listening to too many people, but he gon' we yeah. gon' he gon' listen to me and my brother. Yeah, yeah. You, got to and, and <laughs> you get it? And there you go. Yeah, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I commend you on that, brother. Yeah, you I'm know just gonna always do that. Yeah, man. spreading I, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, especially yeah. to the youngsters. You yeah, know? man, you yeah. got to, man, because if you don't, then what is your legacy? What exactly. are you doing, man? Like, exactly. you ain't gonna leave nothing here. And this is what I say, man. People don't, they don't remember what kind of car you drove or what kind of jewelry you had. People remember how you made them feel. You know what that's I mean? That's my father, R.I.P. to mm -hmm. my pops, man. That's the the whole game. Like people, the way he, his impression was on people. Yep. I still hear that every time. Yep. I'm, a, I'm like you. I'm, my name is the same as his. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you know, when, when, when I'm around people, that's one of the things that sticks out. They mm -hmm. don't always speak on it.